Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. Welcome in on this Monday morning as we kick off another week. Glad to have you. What a beautiful weekend, huh? I'll give you the details of the Lake Kiowee Trump 2024 boat parade a little bit later. As the nation gets to know Minnesota Governor Tim Walsh, more details emerge about who he actually is. The Democrat nominee for vice president is facing another accusation of misrepresenting his background after a Nebraska Chamber of Commerce letter from 2006 resurfaced amid Walsh's campaign with Kamala Harris. A Democrat pollster Cornell Belcher said on NBC News Sunday that Vice President Kamala Harris should continue to avoid sit-down interviews with the press and instead focus on talking to the voters. Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton characterized Kamala Harris's campaign as radical liberals during an interview on ABC's This Week and South Carolina's budget, signed by Governor Henry McMaster, included more than $400 million in earmarks requested and directed by lawmakers within their $14.5 billion spending plan for the year. McMaster did use his line item veto to eliminate $152.5 million worth of what he called pet projects. We have some of the details on those. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton characterized the Harris campaign as radical liberals. This was during uh, ABC's This Week. Host John Carl pushed back, saying that Harris has changed her view since 2020 on a number of issues that Senator Cotton had brought up about Kamala Harris and what we know about her. Cotton wasn't going to accept the ABC host pushback, though, without a challenge. Here's the here's the exchange between the two. You would have thought watching the Democratic convention last week that the Democrats are not in office, that they're not in power, that they're campaigning against an incumbent Republican. When in reality, she's been part of the failures of the Biden-Harris administration for four years. And when she campaigned for president in her own right, she did in fact promise things like decriminalizing I mean, illegal immigration but, and taking away health insurance. But that's his God. position she's clearly changed on. And no, she, she has said she has changed. Yes, 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 no, she has. No, no, no she, she has not. John, she, she, she has not said that. She's not, you pointed out to Senator Sanders repeatedly things that her campaign has said. Anonymous aides speaking on background to reporters have said, well, she no longer believes these things. Okay, maybe she has changed her position on things like taking away your health insurance and confiscating your gun. If she has changed her position, she owes it to the American people to come out and say okay. in her own words when she changed and why she changed. That's one reason why she needs to address the American people and speak to these questions, because the only basis they have to conclude what she will be like as president is what she's done for four years in this administration and what she said in her own voice in the last campaign. Remember, these are not like college essays, John. This is what she was said when she was campaigning for president as a 54-year-old woman. If she's had such a radical change of heart in the last five years, she owes the American people answers. And good for Tom Cotton. Because this is what will drive you insane. Who does John Carl work for here? It's a national news network. ABC, supposedly, supposed to be journalists. Yet Carl is arguing with Tom Cotton and defending Kamala Harris. So does he work for the news network or does he work for the Kamala Harris for President Campaign Committee? It's insane that these network talking heads are not only giving Harris a free pass. They're, they're not asking questions. They're not objecting to as to why 
it's been what 35 36 days now and she hasn't had an interview sat down for an interview with any of them but they're actually defending her john carl was was on the attack there with tom cotton and that's just a portion of that i i, I share with you about 60 seconds maybe a, a minute and 30 of that of, of an overall conversation that lasted about six eight minutes and a couple times John Carl just really got confrontational with Cotton Tom, with Tom Cotton with what Cotton was saying about Kamala Harris. A listener sent me a link to a column that I think is on Substack. Uh, it's by Sasha Stone, titled "Free Thinking," and says that the Harris campaign is love bombing the American people. She writes, America is being love-bombed by the Kamala Harris campaign. It's being confusing and disoriented, but so many are going along with it because how can they not? Being love-bombed is hard to resist, she writes. Yes, love-bombed, she says. That's what all this looks like. And as any dime store trauma therapist will tell you, those who are the most insecure are the ones who must love-bomb to erase any doubt or critical thinking. They know Kamala Harris is one bad interview away from losing this election. They know she's still the same Kamala that turned off so many of the American public. They know that sooner or later she'll get triggered and that temper will come out. They know that they have nothing else but this big lie that they're all going along with. None of the past four years will mean anything, not amid a storm of love bombing, she says. Harris can say anything, be anything, pretend anything, and she'll get nothing but eyes in the shape of hearts looking back at her yes much of it is mass formation psychosis coined by mattias desmond as we slouch towards a technocratic totalitarian state she writes during 2020 we were all on lockdown those online became part of a mass formation once they came together as one group that would go along with no mask then mask then mostly peaceful protests then systemic racism, then vaccines, then lockdowns, then cancel culture, and finally a weaponized DOJ against Trump, they were both terrorized and compliant by the end of it. They had a volunteer army of fanatics who would punish them publicly if they said the wrong thing or stepped out of line. That kind of fear does strange things to a community, and it hasn't gone away. She makes That's a good point, isn't it? So many people were just bullied during that period of time by the Democrats, that they're kind of afraid to stand up to them and to be heard, right? Tucker Carlson says that uh, Kamala Harris is more like Gavin Newsom than he ever realized and admits that Kamala Harris is more skillful than he ever thought and that we must respect this and be fearful of what she's capable of. Here's a, a quick clip from Tucker Carlson. Consider what he intends to do if we give him power again. Consider his explicit intent to set free violent extremists who assaulted those law enforcement officers at the Capitol. His explicit intent to jail journalists, political opponents, and anyone he sees as the enemy. Can I I just interject here for a second? This woman's really scary. She could easily get elected president. She's much more skillful than I have ever seen. Um, She's a liar on the deepest level. The things she is saying right now are not just untrue. They're the opposite of the truth, which is the hallmark of evil. She's an extremist. She'll say anything. She's much more like Gavin Newsom than I ever realized. I could go through a whole litany of why what, what she's saying is not true. There were not, it wasn't an armed mob. There's not one person inside the Capitol with a firearm, period. Um, The only person who was shot, in the Capitol was an unarmed woman shot by one of Nancy Pelosi's bodyguards. So again, again, and again, she's telling us that she fought the cartels to secure the border. She's the border czar and the border is controlled by the cartels. Um, She argued that Donald Trump, quote, tried to throw away your vote. Didn't (laughs) the Democrat party just throw away all the votes and install her? Well, exactly. <laughs> she She's saying that Donald Trump will free from prison violent extremists, meaning like 75-year-old lower middle class women with diabetes. 
when she endorsed defunding the police and opening the prisons to allow actual criminals out, which is why the crime rate has spiked, to allow the population of Venezuela's prisons, Caracas's prisons are now living in the United States because of her? I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, and I don't want to sound like I'm whining or fact-checking, which I hate, but what she's saying is the mirror image of the truth. She doesn't care. She's got no reference points in the truth, and she's an extremist. And she's a former prosecutor, which is, and no former prosecutor should hold power, period. I, I, I've covered them my whole life. I've intensely disliked every single one of them for good reason. I think they're scary. They're liars, and they're megalomaniacal. And they put people in prison for political reasons. I've seen it again and again and again, and she's one of them. And she and the Democrats will win at all costs. They won't care what they do between now and November. So, so back to this column. This young lady quickly tells a story of how she met this young man one summer, uh, and he made all these promises. And by the end of the summer, he is gone. She said, I always thought, why would he make all those promises anyway? And she kind of uh, compares this to the promises of Kamala Harris and the Democrat Party and what we had to endure last week during the DNC. All these promises, all these feel-good stories, all this talk about joy and freedom, and they mean none of it. The Democrats and Kamala Harris are still the same people they were and the same people that we know and the same people who have gotten our country into the mess that it is now. Nothing's going to change, and this should motivate us to work even harder between now and November. We have to win. We cannot lose. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. PhD Weight Loss wants you to know, yes, you can. You can get back to your ideal healthy weight. Yes, you can get back into sizes you thought you'd never see again. And yes, you can get rid of that harmful belly fat all without becoming dependent on medication loaded with side effects. Hi, it's Joey Hudson here. PhD Weight Loss encourages and equips you to lose weight the healthy, natural way and keep it off for the rest of your life. Dr. Ashley Lucas, a licensed registered nutritionist, developed a solid plan that works. Trust me, I lost 30 pounds. You see, PhD Weight Loss removes the guesswork. They literally tell you exactly what to eat each day while you watch the pounds melt away. But they also teach you to think about food differently and to learn to anticipate and navigate situations that make you want to indulge. PhD coaches will teach you to believe finally that yes, you can do it. With no gimmicks or lifelong medications, finally lose the weight and keep it off. Yes, you can. Call today. PhD Weight Loss, 864-644-1900. That's 864-644-1900. Or go to myphdweightloss.com. What a great time we had on Saturday at the Lake Kiwi 2024 Trump boat parade. Wow. There wasn't an official count of how many boats were there. There were hundreds and hundreds easily. Uh, and, and I saw estimates from anywhere from 400 to 500 to 600 plus. And it was really hard to count because it's not like a parade that you'd see with cars coming down the street where they're in single file. In this case, boats had started gathering early Saturday morning in South Cove and were literally just packed into this cove. When we got there just prior to the 11 o'clock kickoff of the parade, the cove was just packed. It was just full. You could not even get close really to uh, South Cove. So we got there, and and Candy Bianco, who I had had on a couple times over the past uh, couple weeks, she organized Saturday's event. Her boat was front and center, had these big, large, red, white, and blue balloons. You couldn't miss her. And she sounded the alarm, and the parade was off. And we said hello to Candy, and then we kind of, sat out front there and greeted people as they came by and boat after boat. We, we had, we just, it's so nice to see so many of you, but it was just hard to count because as the parade started, you know, you had eight, 10, 12 boats wide, this, this onslaught, uh, this parade and it lasted for a good, I don't know, 30, 30, 40 minutes 
as they came by, and we just sat there and greeted people as, as they as they came through. So I would estimate at, at one point when everybody got out of the cove and and was started on in this parade, it was probably conservatively a mile long, and again eight twelve boats wide. Uh, WYFF News Four had their helicopter out and got some great aerial footage. You can find that on our Facebook page. Just search uh, Joey Hudson, or um, you can go to Mike Gallagher's page, Mike Online. Uh, They have some references to to various videos that different listeners sent to us. But it was great fun, and it was just great to see so many of you. You, you, uh, You kind of pulled over and said hello and blew your horn, and we were... Uh, yelling back and forth. It it was just fun uh, to see uh, on a beautiful Saturday, and it was nice and clear to see that many patriotic Americans flying their American flags, flying their Trump flags, showing their support for Donald Trump and showing their support for our country and our way of life. And I just just feel so blessed to have been a part of that, to have been able to, to be out there with Peg and Mike and, my brother and sister-in-law, uh, Patty and Ansel King, our, our friends, Ann and Ed Harris, um, Mark Hendricks and his wife and, and son from uh, uh, from my radio uh, station, News Talk 98.9 WORD in the upstate of South Carolina. We just had a great time. And w- when we got close to the Duke Energy area there where we kind of crossed from the, uh, the south side of Lake Kiwi onto the north side there's a bridge there that we cross under and there were a lot of people who had gathered there to watch and had their banners on the bridge and were just waving and greeting us and uh it was a great fun if if i saw you out there saturday and we didn't get to say hello sorry that i missed you but uh wow wow it, it just really gives you uh a, a renewed enthusiasm for this campaign season for this election year uh if if you weren't there Saturday and you ever have an opportunity to be in a boat parade, let me encourage you to do so because it was just great, great fun. Uh, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, as we kind of get to know him as the nation gets to know who this man is, you know, just prior to the Democrat National Convention, there was the questions about the 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 stolen valor, about him exaggerating his military career. Kamala Harris, his running mate, is facing another accusation of misrepresenting his background after a Nebraska Chamber of Commerce letter from 2006 resurfaced over the weekend. The story centers around when he first ran for Congress in Minnesota. And on his campaign website, he talked about receiving an award from the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce in 1993 for his work with the business community. According to a 2006 article from the Post Bulletin, uh, that's not exactly correct. According to the article, he never received such an award, which was outlined to him in a blistering letter from the then president of the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce, Barry Kennedy. Kennedy wrote, we researched this matter and can confirm that you have not been the recipient of any award from the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce. Uh, The letter was addressed to Waltz on November 1st, 2006. Uh, It reads, I'm not going to draw a conclusion about your intentions by including this line in your biography. However, we respectfully request that you remove any reference to our organization as it could be considered as an endorsement of your candidacy. It should be pointed out, however, that the U.S. Chamber of Commerce has endorsed your opponent, Congressman Gil Gutschneck, for his support of small business issues, Kennedy continued. The letter was unearthed by Minnesota outlet Alpha News last week after the controversy gained traction locally in 2006. The Post Bulletin, which is a Minnesota newspaper based in Rochester, reported in 2006 that Waltz's congressional campaign updated its website to reflect Waltz did not win a Nebraska Chamber of Commerce award, but had won an award from the Nebraska Junior Chamber of Commerce, known as the JCs. The then campaign manager passed off the issue as a typographical error, according to the news reports. Uh, When approached by Fox 
about the 2006 controversy. The Harris-Walsh campaign said Walsh frequently speaks openly and off the cuff. Now listen to this. Governor Walsh speaks the way real people speak, openly and off the cuff, they said. The American people appreciate that Governor Walsh tells it like it is and doesn't talk like a politician, and they appreciate the difference between someone who occasionally misspeaks and a pathological liar like Donald Trump. They just had to try to work this back around to Donald Trump. So this man misrepresents himself. This is another instance of this, and they want to tie it back to supposedly uh, Trump's pathological liar, that, that, that Trump's a liar. These guys are sick. That's why we have to beat them in November. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen. When it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a Discounted Appliance Warehouse they treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. offered new details about his conversations with former President Trump in his first interview since dropping out of the race uh, and endorsing Trump. This was yesterday. Uh, He made the statement during an exclusive interview with Fox News Sunday with host Shannon Bream. He argued that his campaign had failed to gain ground due to censorship by the media. He said, It became clear to me that I did not have a path to victory. 16 months of censorship of not being able to get on any network really itself for Fox, he said. And he's right. I don't know what he expected. It it shouldn't have been uh, a surprise to RFK that the networks are not going to do him any favors. I mean, if you saw any of Tom Cotton's interview with, uh, with John Carl on ABC, that's, that's how the networks have been. They have protected Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. They protected Joe Biden up until the time he finally just dropped out of the race because he's pushed out by his own party. They, they never questioned why Biden uh, would uh, was so careful not to be out on the campaign trail and being interviewed by the, by the media outside of very well-planned events. They, they controlled his environment. They controlled who had access to it. And they've done the same thing with Kamala Harris. And the media doesn't object to it. The, 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 the networks don't challenge this. Uh, Kennedy went on to say that Trump had been reaching out to his campaign periodically, saying that they had even spoken just a few hours after the assassination attempt against Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania, back in July and that they had agreed that they could work together on issues they agree on and still be critical of the ones that they do not. Here's the exchange. President Trump had been reaching out to me, and I talked to him a few hours after the assassination attempt, and we had a long conversation by phone. I then had two extensive meetings, and there, there were issues, the, the broad issues that were most important to me, the ones that brought me into the campaign, which was ending the Ukraine war, ending the censorship and protecting children's health, were all and reforming our food supply, all the things that we need to do to make our children healthy again. 
those are all things that President Trump also wanted to work on. And he invited me to form a unity government. We agreed that we'd be able to continue to criticize each other on issues on which we don't agree. But these issues are so important in their way of unifying our country. We need in this country to reach a point where we love our children more than we hate each other. It's a good uh, unifying theme that I think a lot of people could get around. It's how we get there. That's always the devil is in the details. Have you all negotiated over or talked about a cabinet position, another position within a Trump government in exchange for your endorsement? No. There was, there's been no commitments. Um, but, I, you know, I met with President Trump, with his family, with his closer advisors, and we just made a general um, commitment that we were going to work together. Yeah, and that was uh, a portion of RFK's interview on Fox yesterday with Shannon Bream. Kennedy, of course, officially announced his withdrawal from the presidential race late last week. He was at a news conference in Phoenix, Arizona. He accused the Democrat Party of waging, quote, continual legal warfare against both President Trump and myself and running a sham Democrat primary election that he said prevented him from having a fair shot at the White House. He's right on that. The, the Democrats would not allow him to challenge Joe Biden in a real Democrat primary. They closed it down. And so then Joe Biden uh, apparently or, or appeared to be getting the Democrat nomination as he locked up the a commitment from the delegates after the primaries only to be pushed out himself. And now Kamala received the votes of those delegates just last week. So Kamala Harris, just look at this for a minute and just let this sink in. Kamala Harris failed miserably in her own presidential campaign in 2020. She never even made it to the first ballot in the primary before she dropped out. She dropped out after uh, a debate. So she's never received a single primary vote in a Democrat primary. So they, she somehow manages to get her boss, Joe Biden, pushed out. They still don't vote at the convention. They coordinate her. And now she's a major political party's nominee for president of the United States. Now, what's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with the fact that, uh, that the Democrat party pushed back on someone like Robert F. Kennedy, whose family epitomizes the Democrat party. His uncle was president. His father was running for president, was running for the Democrat nomination, and would have received it had he not been assassinated. Following the announcement that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, was going to be dropping out of the race and throwing his support behind Donald Trump, political analysts and data experts uh, were debating the effect of Kennedy dropping out and, and how this might affect the race. Of course, it was what everybody was talking about over the weekend. CNN host Aaron Burnett, cited a recent New York times Siena college poll showing that Kennedy uh, had 6% support in Arizona and Nevada, two battleground states, and 5% in Michigan, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, three more battleground states. So 6% and 5% in a battleground state can make a difference. And that could mean that this alliance between Kennedy and Trump could be very important. As you heard, uh, she asked the question on whether or not there was any, uh, specu there's been speculation that Kennedy would play a role in a Trump administration. He, he very clearly said that they did not talk about a cabinet post. Kennedy, of course, the nephew of president John F. Kennedy, son of Senator Robert F. Kennedy, both of whom were assassinated. He, after being denied a, a 
Democrat primary. He sought to run as an independent, but ran into ran into problems of getting on the ballots. Kennedy's endorsement of Trump threw a, a wrench, if you will, in the news cycle that was previously dominated by Harris and the, uh, the Kumbaya DNC last week, who, uh, of course, Harris uh, officially accepting the Democrat nomination in Chicago. Former President Donald Trump, according to some of the latest polls, still leads Vice President Kamala Harris, but depending on which poll you look at, the race is tight. The latest Rasmussen reports, national uh, th- th- they use national telephone and online surveys, found that in a two-way matchup, 49% of likely U.S. voters will vote for Trump, while 46% would vote for Harris. 2% say that they'd vote for some other candidate, and another 2% are undecided. These findings show a closer race than a week ago when Trump led by four points with 49% to 45%. And again, we've talked about polls are going to be all over the board between now and November. Interesting, though, that uh, on NBC News Sunday, Democrat pollster Cornell Belcher said that he hopes that Vice President Kamala Harris will continue to avoid any sit-down interviews with the press and instead just focus on what he called talking to the voters, Uh, just having these very planned out, well-controlled rallies that she's been attending where she can have her teleprompter and not get off a message. Since becoming the Democrat Party's nominee, Harris has not had a single sit-down, in-depth media interview. She has an upcoming debate, one that she's agreed to, September the 10th, others that she has not agreed to. Fox News had made the invitation to both candidates for a September 4th debate. Kamala Harris is refusing to participate, or at least has not agreed to yet. Uh, Mr. Belcher made the argument that maybe it's a a good thing that Kamala Harris does not participate in interviews and these public events. Basically, he's he's suggesting that she run a basement campaign, just like Joe Biden did in 2020, and it landed him in the White House. And that's what's scary, because we all know that Kamala Harris is not capable of putting two sentences together when she doesn't have a teleprompter in front of her. She did pretty good on her acceptance speech last week, but again, she had had a weeks. She had weeks to prepare for it and to practice. Kamala Harris and and her handlers do not want the American people to see the old Kamala that we know, to see the word salad Kamala. And I got a feeling they're going to stick to that strategy, and we're not going to see her. You agree? Love to get your comments. I love to get your uh, your feedback on what you think. RFK's endorsement can mean to Trump. Text me, email me, joey at joeyhudson.com. Hope you'll join the conversation today, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. It doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. 
On the text line, Ace writes, uh, Hello, Joey. Hope you and your family are doing well. One of your listeners mentioned that they think that the Dems are plotting some kind of scandal. It seems that way to me as well, he says. It seems that someone is writing everything for Kamala because her ignorance seems to be a little covered up compared to the way she was before running for president. You're so right there, Ace. Uh, He says, Why can't the Democratic voters see the significance of the way they're speaking? Help me out here. They all can't be that stupid, can they? Have a great Monday, Joey. Well, uh, Ace, I hope not. You know, over the weekend, as uh, M- Mike Gallagher's been with us, he is here for the Lake Kiwi Trump vote parade. We watched a couple of things, and we saw some clips of Kamala Harris and, and some of her campaign activities over the weekend. And he said, America isn't this stupid, are there? Are they? Is there any chance that they'd be so stupid that they'd go along with what she's saying, that they'd believe what she's saying. And it is scary to think because she can sound so convincing. She talks about how she's going to, uh, you know, get, get, uh, get control of inflation, how grocery prices are going to go down, how prescription drug prices are going to go down. And to someone, uh, as, as Trump will describe them, a, a low information voter, they might believe it. They might think she has this ability. It sounds good when you start talking about corporate greed and you're going to, you know, you're going to stop the price gouging. Although those of us who have studied a little about economics knows that you can't do price controls. That that's communist. Price controls is only going to hurt our economy. We'll see though, and that, but that's where you and I come in. That's where we have to educate our friends. If we have friends or family or coworker who we believe is kind of edging over into the dark side, <laughs> uh, that they think they're going to support Kamala Harris, we have to educate them of who she really is. A texter says, uh, hey, Joey, Peg, and Mike, wanted to come down and surprise you today. We don't have a boat with a Trump flag, but we have a motorcycle with a Trump flag. We talk with... Three different Lake Kiwi associated people on the phone this morning, and it sounded like we wouldn't be able to get in there on the bike. It's about an hour, 45 minutes uh, to get there from here at the farm in North Carolina, so we decided not to try it. But we know it's a big time, and we wish we could have joined you there this weekend. Probably everybody is going to be extra charged up because of RFK Jr., uh, joined the Trump team yesterday, Jennifer and Andy. Well, Jennifer, I'm, I'm sorry you and Andy did not try to make it down on the bike. There would have been plenty of room. I understand that uh, there was room at South Code County Park where a lot of people showed up there before the parade kicked off. Uh, there was also uh, the, the area on the bridge on at Rochester Highway where a lot of people parked their cars and just walked out on the bridge and, and greeted people as we came uh, from, through that section of Kiwi. There's a section of Lake Kiwi that you go from the south side of the lake to the north side of the lake, and you have to cross under this this bridge. A lot of people there greeting us. It was great fun. Uh, Jennifer, sorry you didn't make it. I hope, though, that you, you and Andy will come back. We're going to have a, another watch party. I'll give you the details later, but we're going to have a watch party in Greenville uh, uh, for the September 10th debate. So, Jennifer and Andy, I hope that I'll see you there. Tony says, Trump boat rally was awesome. So many boats and great people to celebrate with. You're right, Tony. You are so right. And, and if you missed it, boy, did you, did you miss it. Uh, I just can't say enough about what an experience that was uh, on Saturday. Uh, South Carolina's budget this year included $400 million in earmarks. Uh, earmarks or special requests that are put in by legislators. In most cases, it's bringing money back to their districts. It uh, This year's budget included uh, $400 million in the, an overall budget of $14.5 billion. For the most part, dollars followed the population, but some counties with smaller populations cracked into the top 10 because they had an influential lawmaker. The top 10 counties in South Carolina, Richland County received $43.5 million. Greenville County, 
41.9. Horry County, 35.2. York County, 30.2. Charleston County, 27.8. Sumter County, now, and Sumter's a smaller county, 24.2 million. That's where speaker the Speaker of the House lives. Spartanburg County, my home county, 19.5 million. Oconee County, close with the 17.5 million. Of course, Oconee, a smaller county as well, but uh, Senator Alexander, president of the Senate, lives, is, is, represents uh, Oconee County, as does outgoing uh, South Carolina Rep uh, Sanders, uh, very influential chairman uh, of a House committee over there. Beaufort County has 13.4, uh, four, uh, 13.1 million and Florence County with 13 million. Residents who have repeatedly sent elected officials back to Columbia and they then they have earned seniority are able to bring this money back to the communities. For example, Senate Finance Chairman Harvey Peeler from Cherokee He's been in the Senate since 1981. He became committee chairman uh, in 2022 after the death of Florence County Republican Hugh Leatherman, who had been chairman of the uh, Senate Finance Committee for over 20 years. Peeler was able to get $10.2 million uh, in earmarked spending, which included $4 million towards construction of a recreation facility in Clover. $3 million to help York School District 1 complete an agricultural arena, and $2 million towards upgrades for the city of York's recreational facility, among other things. Richland County has three members on the House Ways and Means Committee, the, the committee that determines uh, house spending, including House Minority Leader Todd Rutherford, uh, South Carolina Senator Darrell Jackson, who's on the Finance Committee, among the projects they were able to bring in, $4.4 million for a 10,000-square-foot marketplace that will include a farmer's market, $5 million to help eliminate railroad crossings along Assembly Street in Columbia, House Ways and Means Chairman Bruce Bannister, Republican in, in Greenville, along with uh, some of his colleagues, Representative Chandra Dillard of Greenville, Senator Carl Allen of Greenville, Projects that they uh, were able to get, 100000 for park facility upgrades, $1 million for community center work, and $5 million for renovation and expansion of the Bon Secure Wellness Arena. And again, the list goes on. You should check out some of these earmarks and see where your money's going. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of Just the Truth to some friends. Just click on the Share button. Send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in November, we got to build an army of conservatives. The way we beat Joe Biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth. Hey, keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your emails always welcome as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the My Pillow special, $25 for the My Towels six-piece towel set when you use promo code Joey. Just go to mypillow.com. Always use promo code Joey. We're back again tomorrow. Hope you will be too. Remember, God's got this. He's still in control.